Welcome to the Natural Health Show with one of New England's leading natural health care specialists, Mark Mincola. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 on 95.9 WATD. He's waiting to hear from you. Welcome home, Natural Health Nation. Great to have you on board with us. And uh, as is the case each and every Sunday, we have some fascinating news and uh, wisdom to share with you all, and it's great to have you on board. You know, um, there's some remarkable changes that are taking place in our world. We're certainly living in a very uh, bizarre sort of sci-fi time, and uh, there have been so many kind of virulent viruses and bugs that have been circulating and so different than, than days gone by. And there's, a, of course, recently a lot of folks are familiar with a viral pneumonia that's been circulating for the past two years, resistant to virtually any treatment. It's been real stubborn. It's been pretty nasty. But, uh, you know, I came upon an interesting story that was a 2010 story about molecular biologist uh, Becky McLean. She's an ex-Pfizer worker and uh, was paralyzed uh, by a bioengineered lentivirus uh, that was designed at Pfizer Labs in Groton, Connecticut. Uh, so here was this uh, molecular biologist who was uh, an employee of Pfizer at Groton, Connecticut, and was taking part in research that was clearly about bioengineering viruses. And uh, as it turns out, she claims that in 2002 and 2003, she was exposed by colleagues uh, to some of these engineered viruses that they were working on, and uh, she became paralyzed, filed a lawsuit against Pfizer, and uh, the end result was she was awarded $1.37 million in that particular lawsuit. And, uh, you know, I think it raises a question, of course, uh, about some of these practices. When you consider that uh, OSHA essentially dismissed the case uh, in 2005, she was fired right after the OSHA decision. Of course, uh, when you think about OSHA dismissing the case, I mean, all they are is they, they, they essentially claim that they weren't able to keep up with the level of sophistication uh, required to make suitable rulings uh, against bioengineered viruses, <laughs> which, is, which is crazy because OSHA essentially is the Occupational Safety and Health uh, Administration, the main federal agency charged with the enforcement of safety and health-related legislation. Yet, here was this employee of Pfizer uh, who was taking part in bioengineering viruses and was paralyzed as a result. And a uh, remarkable story that, uh, again, OSHA dismissed the project. They claim that they're not able to keep up with the level of sophistication required to make a judgment or a ruling uh, on bioengineered viruses. So who is overseeing this work? What kind of dangers are we being exposed to? How common is this, this business of bioengineered viruses? And how much does it play a role in our day-to-day -day lives? How much of these superbugs that we're exposed to in our day-to-day -day lives are the direct result of carelessness uh, and, and a lack of sophistication scientifically as well to, uh, to manage these superbugs. And, uh, you know, I was also surprised to find out that these superbugs, of course, are virtually, they're, they're being researched virtually everywhere. Uh, bioengineering of viruses in particular is very commonly worked out in virtually every college and university in the United States. So it's happening all around us. How many? This, this, particular, uh, this, this particular case, this Pfizer case, this Becky McLean case of 2010 sort of begs the question or raises the question about the safety practices of such uh, research. And again, if it's being conducted virtually everywhere, how much of this could play or does play into our immune challenges and uh, these virulent viruses that seem to be circulating so different in nature than any before them. Um, you know, over the years, we all would, of course, have the sniffles, the flus, the colds, and some pretty mighty, of course, but 
it seems like the superbug is just absolutely, it's everywhere. It's just uh, unfortunate that it's uh, becoming more and more common in our world. Um, there's um, some remarkable, remarkable studies that, of course, have, have benefited us as well. There's been some viruses that have been bioengineered and have been studied for the purposes of, uh, of uh, actually killing cancer cells. And one virus that was re recently bioengineered in 2006 that actually uh, made cancer cells eat themselves, if you can believe that. So viruses are really quite remarkable, of course. And uh, there actually has been uh, virus research, uh, viral, uh, bioengineered viruses, I should say, that actually have uh, been found to uh, to help the functioning of green lithium batteries. Yes, I said viruses. Uh, of course, uh, to kill resistant strains of bacteria, to boost memory in mice. Remarkable, remarkable. Uh, but the thing that really concerns me is uh, that many of these reports that I've come across, such as the Becky McLean case, seem to indicate that uh, a lot of these viruses are not well controlled. And uh, there's just really a wide open sea of possibilities here in terms of uh, what you and I have to contend with immunologically. Uh, as far as a lot of the research that's being conducted around the notion of uh, bioweaponry, for example. Uh, and again, there's an interesting case that I'm going to mention right after the break about uh, a very new uh, quandary, of course, that the world has been confronted with about some bioweaponry research, some viral research that's been done in the Netherlands, and uh, quite the controversy that's been stirred there. We're going to talk about that, but most importantly, we're going to talk with you about how to help you beat superbugs naturally. Stay tuned. Be right back. Hi, this is Laura from Good Health. When it comes to lasting health and nutrition, the old adage, you are what you eat, really is true. At Good Health, we make it easy to eat healthy and save money. We carry only 100% certified organic, super clean produce and fresh garden herbs. Our groceries are natural, wheat-free, dairy-free, low-carb, and kosher. So rethink your lifestyle, read product labels, and look for actual ingredients on all your purchases. We're here to help you shop smart, find the best values, and enjoy our everyday shopping convenience. Select only the freshest fruits, veggies, and natural groceries for your family. Choose all natural health, beauty, and sun care products. Do all you can to stay well. Try our whole food and gluten-free vitamins and sports supplements. Come to Good Health in Quincy or Hanover today. Speak to someone who's informed. Learn more about our in-store events and monthly specials at goodhealthnaturalfood.com. Come see why our name says it all. And thanks for listening. Do you believe you're free to choose your own path in life? Are you simply predestined? Do you believe your life is defined by nature or nurture? Perhaps more importantly, to what extent might the quality of your life really be about mind over matter? For answers to these important questions and much more, I invite you to join hypnotist Larry Comer for a once-in-a-lifetime mind over matter workshop to explore your subconscious and the limitless realm of possibilities there to await you. If it's bad habits, a lack of confidence, a pattern of fail relationships, stresses, fears, or phobias, and continue to sabotage your life's progress, this workshop is sure to change your mind and change your life. So, whether you're an allied health professional or just an interested layperson, this powerful Mind Over Matter workshop will equip you with exceptional tools for personal growth. For information, call 508-217-8682. That's 508-217-8682. Tell them you heard it on the Natural Health Show and receive a free MP3 session and start a work on self-relaxation. Change your mind and change your life. Hi, I'm Sarah Gardner, founder of Yoga We Get ready for the greatest yoga event ever. A one-of-a-kind, day-long yoga fan, Sunday, May 6th, at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Join world-renowned yoga instructor Darren Baptiste and Boston's top instructors. Listen to live music and participate in Acro Yoga. All proceeds will benefit Children's Hospital Boston and the Africa Yoga Project. So find your place on the mat. Join us for the best yoga event ever. Register at yogareachesout.org today. Back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Foods, Gyro Formulas, and Ultimate Healing Journey. All right, welcome back. And uh, fear not, there's plenty of uh, natural alternatives that are very viable and have been well studied as well. One of them, of course, uh, actually has been studied as far back as 1982 at the Center for Disease Control and uh, as a natural substance that is food grade 
comes from a fluid source and uh, nonetheless has been clearly proven uh, and demonstrated in studies uh, at the Center for Disease Control a number of years ago that uh, it is capable of defeating uh, virulent influenza A, influenza B, swine flu, bird flu, and the whole nine yards. We're going to talk about all those solutions again in a little bit. But, uh, interesting story from February 23rd of this year, 2012, by Jonathan Benson, who's a staff writer for uh, the Natural News, which is a great take. If you've never uh, taken a little peek at the Natural News, it's really well worth a peek. But uh, this, uh, this great story goes on to suggest that for the past several months, there has been an ongoing debate about whether or not to publish controversial research about a new militarized and highly virulent strain of H5N1 avian flu, bird flu, capable of spreading between mammals, including humans. The U.S. National Sciences Advisory Board Biosecurity holds the position that certain details about how the virus was created should be withheld from publishing by various others in the scientific community, many of which appear to work for vaccine interests, are demanding full disclosure. The issue stems from research conducted by Dr. Ron Fauchier and his colleagues from Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands that resulted in a deliberate creation of weaponized forms of H5N1 that spreads between mammals, including humans. Prior to this research, H5N1 transmission was limited primarily to birds, uh, as natural forms of the virus do not typically afflict mammals. But this has been, of course, genetically uh, modified. It has been uh, bioweaponized, if you will. So it's been converted into a super bug, a super virus. And, uh, and again, I think that we're, we're very clear about the fact that there is a lot of militarization, uh, weapons-grade viruses, bugs that are going on right now. And uh, th this particular uh, crew, this, uh, this science staff, Dr. Ron Fauchier and his group from the Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands, essentially proved and uh, sort of took it upon themselves to engage this scientific research, proving to the world that they could make weapons-grade uh, viruses out of the avian or bird flu, which, again, they, uh, I guess they proved the point that it's easy enough to do it if, if, uh, if you want to do it. It's uh, easy to do. They basically demonstrate that. And, uh, you know, I think that there's an awful lot of questions that need to be asked here. How, how common is all this? I mean, how much, again, we talked about the, the molecular biologist uh, Becky McLean that, that uh, in 2010 was awarded $1.37 million dollars for being exposed at the Pfizer labs in Groton, Connecticut, uh, exposed to uh, weapons-grade or bioengineered lentiviruses and that uh, caused her paralysis, so she claims, and uh, you know, claims that she was exposed by colleagues uh, several years earlier. Uh, but again, how much of this is going on? How much of this has to do with the virulency uh, the increasing virulency of what we're exposed to uh, out here in the public uh, on an ongoing basis. I, mean, I don't remember year, years ago, I don't remember not, you know, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's hard for me to recollect that uh, the summer months were flu ridden. And yet it's not unusual that somebody can get a pretty bad virus in the middle of the summer nowadays. Uh, certainly what's going around in the wintertime is, is just uh, remarkably mutated because it seems like there may have been one or two colds and one or two uh, bad bouts per year that uh, had characteristics or ear markings of a bug that would cause one or two primary symptoms, maybe three. But rarely would you find repeated, repeated courses of, of waves of superbugs that would cause one problem after another and seem to have these specialized genetic ear markings to cause a variety of things that uh, were previously un unbeknownst to us. So uh, there's definitely some funny business going on. There's no question in my mind about it. And when you read studies such as the, uh, the Becky McLean, I should say, uh, when you read stories rather than the Becky McLean story, or hear about studies such as the one we just mentioned uh, that was recently performed uh, at the Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands simply to prove to the world uh, that it is capable, and look what we can do, uh, and uh, you know, to uh, kind of show us that 
perhaps the world we're living in is really indeed the sci-fi world <laughs> of viral, uh, viral uh, mutation. And, uh, you know, this is something I guess we're going to have to probably just contend with and learn to, learn, learn, learn to live with. Um, and there are solutions, and we keep saying we're going to talk about many of them. You know, I think viruses seem to be grabbing an awful lot of headlines these days, even with something like, uh, I just recently watched a Dennis Bord, Dr. Dennis Bordet uh, video recently about multiple sclerosis. Um, Dennis Bordet is a researcher for the past 10 years at the Oregon State Health and Sciences University. And um, he talks about how the, the now they're starting to look at uh, multiple sclerosis being caused perhaps by a radnovirus, a mutated virus that is undetectable. He speaks about radnoviruses as being virtually undetected in the body. They leave their DNA markings. They leave their, they leave their breadcrumbs in the woods, if you will. But, but you can't really put a, uh, you can't put a light on them. You can't put your hands around them. Hard to really pin down. So, uh, you know, we're talking even now nowadays with MS. The, he claims that. Uh, in recent studies on monkeys, they tell me found that uh, the radnovirus actually was causing MS symptoms in these monkeys, and that's what really started to cue them out into and direct them into some of this research. That perhaps one of the missing ingredients here with uh, our diagnosing and perhaps better under understanding of uh, the root cause of MS, that uh, mutated viruses may play a role in that process. Again, when you think about the term radnoviruses, you know, you're thinking in, in the concept of an undetectable virus, uh, and there must be thousands of them that we can't really pin down, yet uh, are capable of wreaking havoc on our immune system. So I think that you know, the, more, the more you think about this, the more it really comes down to uh, having to have solutions that are viable solutions, and of course, in my mind, viable natural solutions to really uh, supporting our immune system and uh, helping us to defeat these viruses when, when uh, encountered. And of, of course, there uh, seems to be more of that going on all the time. Um, there's also some interesting concepts that are going around that are floating about in the world these days about, it's kind of conspiratorial, but when you really, when you really look into some of these, these accusations and these sort of paranoid thoughts, uh, the more you research, the more they look real, and it's kind of unfortunate that when you think about things like um, Lyme disease, of course, is something that so many folks are, are talking about nowadays, and unfortunately, so many are stricken by, and, uh, you know, pr prior to the uh, 19, early 1970s, there was no such thing as Lyme disease. Uh, Lyme disease was, was virtually unheard of prior to that time, but uh, uh, there's some interesting thoughts about the, uh, the the origins and the genesis of uh, this crazy, crazy inflammatory disease that is wreaking havoc on the world right now. Uh, there's talk about a gentleman by the name, I would call him a gentleman, a man by the name of Eric Taub, T-A-U-B, who was uh, in charge of Nazi bioweapons engineering uh, back during World War II. And his expertise was uh, the ability to transfer bioweapons grade infection from ticks and mosquitoes to human beings. That was his expertise. And uh, there are many who say that he actually was uh, spared by the United States military and the United States government after the war. And that he, uh, he occupied Lab 257 at Plum Island where all the animal research was done actually after the war. And uh, many say that there was a uh, weapons grade uh, bacteria that actually was engineered by Eric Taub uh, during that time, and that uh, that really is representative of the genesis, the origins of Lyme disease as we know it. And uh, there's an interesting interview that uh, former uh, Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura conducted on October 15th of 2010 with Dr. Roger Brees, who is the former director uh, of the uh, Plum Island Research Center that admitted some humans were accidentally infected during research. So that was admitted to uh, former Governor Jesse Ventura in that uh, October 15, 2010 interview. So there's some really incredible, incredible stories floating about out there. One thing is for certain, without question, 
uh, as we point out, these are times you're going to want to make sure that your immune system is fully engaged and uh, has every powerful opportunity to, uh, to, to flex its muscle when needed. And of course, you know, there are, I think an awful lot of folks are aware of the fact that there are only so many antiviral solutions that the pharmaceutical world has presented out there, the encyclovirs of the world, the Zovirax of the world. Uh, there are, of course, uh, some natural solutions to the antiviral support that are as, uh, as powerful as any. And of course, the, the really interesting part of the natural approach to fighting viruses as in most cases, natural medicine is the side effect factor, which is virtually non-existent. So, you know, when the question comes up of just how powerful, hey, if, if Mark, if what you're telling us is that we're really confronted with some incredible superbugs out there, and we want, we want to really be able to defend our immune systems as things as things continue to grow more dire, uh, is, is there anything out there that, that the world of natural medicine can offer that actually has the power and the punch to make a difference. Because when you think about the good side of natural medicine, of course, it is that there are no side effects, or virtually no side effects. But the downside, I think, in most people's minds, unfortunately, on the other side of that coin, hey, they may be gentle enough not to cause side effects, but are they powerful enough to be effective? And uh, the surprising answer to that is yes, and it's a very resounding yes, because I truly believe that there are natural medicines out there, we, and we're going to talk about them tonight, we're going to give you 10 incredibly powerful immune enhancing antiviral antibacterial medicines that uh, you can purchase over the counter uh, without any kind of uh, problem at all. And these are affordable items, and again, we're talking about uh, natural substances that are safe, effective, no side effects, or virtually no side effects, and uh, I think that the idea is that they are, are powerful enough to make a difference even again as uh, we're confronted with some really powerful, powerful adversaries these days, and uh, apparently adversaries that are growing even more powerful uh, by the minute. And, uh, and, and it's, even though it's unnerving to consider why the enemy is growing so powerful, and uh, there's an awful lot of uh, shady business that is taking place out there these days because of uh, because of an unreasonable approach to. Uh, to, uh, I guess I'd say, uh, power, research for purposes of power. Uh, but, um, but there again, the good news is there are some really amazing natural medicines that uh, are available to help us uh, win this war and to support immunity. And as I pointed out earlier, one of the substances actually has been researched at the Center for Disease Control as far back as 1982. And uh, it's something that you can buy right at Good Health Natural Foods. You can buy it on the counter really easily, affordable. Food grade, that's the important thing when we're talking about natural medicines that are food grade and uh, do indeed have the ability to make the difference. And again, one of the substances that we're talking about is food grade. Another substance we talked about a little bit last week actually, that's also not just food grade, but it's a food. It's actually a food. And a study that the, you know, it, uh, in Australia, and it's been widely uh, reviewed as a substance that uh, indeed does have the ability to kill superbugs because of the methyl glyoxal compounds, which of course compromise the immunity of a bug. So yes, bacteria and viruses actually have their own immune systems, ironically. And the objective is, of course, to weaken their immune systems so that your immune system can have a better effect. And that's pretty much what a lot of these natural antiviral and antibacterial substances do. They strip the lipid shields. A lot of these viruses that we're talking about, the super viruses, have a lipid coating, a fatty shield, that make them virtually, uh, uh, well, that make them protected in, in the, uh, you know, when you're confronted by your, your immune cells. So as your immune cells are trying to fight these viruses off, and these bad, these, these horrible viruses will actually support themselves by shielding themselves and wrapping themselves and ensconcing themselves in a lipid barrier. So uh, again, one of the really remar remarkable mechanistic ways that these natural antiviral substances help us is stripping and unzipping these protective shield barriers of fat that these bugs will protect and defend themselves in so that your immune system can get at them. 
so we're going to we're going to give the uh, top ten anti superbug recommendations to help you learn how to beat superbugs naturally. And uh, again, I think that uh, whether we're talking about the sniffles, the flus, the head colds, or any of these uh, superbugs, such as the one we talked about earlier, the viral pneumonia that was uh, still still circulating. Actually, I've had a lot of folks come in my office even recently uh, who have been complaining about the and have been diagnosed even by their physicians with the viral pneumonia. And again, it's it's a rare, rare type of virus because it uh, is extremely virulent, most unusual, has quite the, puts, uh, quite the grip on our, on our pulmonary system and doesn't seem to want to let it go. And uh, where other natural supplements might break some of these viruses down in the past, uh, this one seems to be quite stubborn. And yet again, uh, I've taken folks through the uh, procedure of defeating this, uh, this incredibly powerful viral pneumonia with some of the natural things that we're going to talk about on the program tonight. So uh, we're going to take a short, short little break, and when we come back, we're going to give you those top 10 anti-superbugs and teach you how to beat superbugs naturally. Stay right where you are. Hi, this is Mark Mincoe. You know, over the past decade, the Natural Health Show has attracted many thousands of avid listeners. As the show approaches its 10th anniversary this coming June, I'd like to extend an open invitation to all potential new sponsors to join our Natural Health Show family. If you own a Heart Smart Lighter Fair or seafood restaurant, a fitness or day spa, or if you're an allied health professional or coach, the Natural Health Show is the perfect place for you to make a direct connection with your demographic target. If you really want to zero in and aim the message of your vision directly at those who want to most know about it, Join the Natural Health Show family and sponsors. I promise you'll be glad you did. For information, call Candida at 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. With the burgeoning growth of the Natural Health Show, now's the perfect time to share that growth together. You know, when most people hear the word allergies, they think only of hay fever-like symptoms associated with airborne pollen, dust, and mold. But did you know that many experts estimate that between 60 and 80 million of us suffer from immune-related food allergies without even knowing it? Furthermore, food allergies often contribute to serious health problems such as autism, irritable bowel syndrome, ADD, headaches, and chronic ear infections. Now, there's an effective way to identify and eliminate both your food allergies and the troubling symptoms that they aggravate. Halitest Medical Labs at foodallergy.com offers a full complement of clinical, environmental, and food allergy testing to help you get to the root of your allergy problems. Halitest also provides you with a comprehensive rotation diet, lifestyle booklet, and a wallet card to help you live food allergy-free and stress-free. Do you wonder if you or your loved ones are among the 60 to 80 million food allergy sufferers in America? If so, log on to Alatest Medical Labs, foodallergy.com. Talk to your doctor about ordering a food allergy test from Alatest Medical Labs today. Foodallergy.com. Make sure the food you're eating isn't what's depleting you. Are you tired of indigestion, bloating, and just feeling uncomfortable after eating? Do you feel irritable, moody, unmotivated, or tired? It could be directly connected with your elimination, which can become sluggish or stop completely. If so, colon hydrotherapy may be the answer for you. I'm Lynn from New Life Services in Marshfield. It's a perfect time of year to think about cleansing. It can help solve digestive issues such as constipation while ridding the body of toxins accumulated from processed foods in the environment. New Life Services in Marshfield offers the best in colon cleansing methods using FDA-approved colon hydrotherapy equipment in a private, peaceful setting. I am a nurse and a certified colonic therapist at New Life Services and will guide you through the procedure while reviewing your nutritional needs. Start today and call New Life Services, 781-837-4316. Come visit me at 696 Plain Street in Marshfield, minutes from Route 3 and 3A. Call 781-837-4316. Back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Healthy Living Magazine and Alatest Medical Laboratory. Already welcome back. And uh, hopefully your evening is going smoothly. Hopefully you're healthy and well and you don't have any sniffles or sneezes. But in the event that you uh, may want to consider such things, uh, protection, or like we're talking about tonight, uh, you know, I think... Uh, we, we certainly need to be prepared, let's, let's put it that way. And again, there's some great su supplements that uh, can make big difference. Let's start talking a little bit about those. We talk about monolaurin quite often. And, and again, when we talk about monolaurin, we're talking about lauric acid from coconut oil and 600 milligram caps. 
you know, uh, I say for prevention, you just during cold and flu season in particular, you take one a day. If you feel like you're really up against uh, some sniffling and some coughing and you feel like your immune system is hitting the skids, you probably want to turn to as many as six a day. So two at breakfast, two at lunch, two at dinner. Again, in the, in the face of a very virulent virus, there's nothing better. Keep in mind, this has been studied, as we said, at the Center for Disease Control as far back as uh, 1982 by Dr. John Kabar and Dr. Harnholzer. And uh, we found to be killing influenza A, influenza B, which again, bird flu, swine flu, all the stuff we keep hearing more about. All the superbugs we've talked about tonight, it kills them. So uh, it's a great way to go. Also, we talk uh, often about Manuka honey, M-A-N-U-K-A. Manuka honey, of course, is, uh, has been studied extensively as a superbug killer. We talked about the New Delhi metallo beta lactamase, the uh, NDM, the NDM1 bacteria, of course, which is uh, a superbug, and uh, they claim that it has up to a 35% kill rate. So uh, it's a nasty, nasty thing. And uh, you know, when we talk about the NDM1, the only thing that could kill it, as we said, was uh, was this incredibly amazing honey, this wild bush honey called Manuka honey. Uh, and it does so, as the researchers found, it's been studied at the uh, University of, of, of uh, Sydney, Australia, also University of Wales, Institute of Cardiff. It's been well studied, again, as a, as a really remarkable antibacterial agent against superbugs that's effective. Uh, again, the uh, NDM1 strain was found resistant to 15 different strains of antibiotic, yet it wasn't resistant to the Manuka honey. And we're talking about Manuka honey when it was diluted 1 to 10. 1 to 10. That was found by the University of Sydney in Australia. A 1 to 10 dilution killed the Indian one strain. Nothing else could. 1 to 10 dilution again. Someone asked me this week, what do you mean 1 to 10 uh, dilution? You take one part of in, of the manuka honey and 10 parts water. So you could take uh, that type of dilution and still kill this uh, killer bacteria because it has substances in them called methyl glyoxal compounds that strip the immunity of the bacteria. Okay? And we leave it much more vulnerable to, uh, to uh, attack, to assault, to, uh, to being killed off. You know, and, uh, I, th I think that it's really an important food to have in the house for that reason, especially during cold and flu season. Put it in the tea for the kids, etc. great way to go. Also, we talked about oregano. Dr. Harry Pruce has talked a great deal about his great research done at Georgetown University regarding oregano. Oregano has a, an antioxidant within it called carvacrol, and carvacrol is a very powerful antibiotic. He found, Dr. Harry Pruce did at uh, Georgetown University, that the oregano, the, or, the oregano oil, if you will, was as powerful against staph bacteria, against strep bacteria, rather than staph bacteria, I believe it was uh, E. coli, I'm sorry, E. coli, uh, that was as effective as penicillin, vancomycin, and strepto streptomycin, so it was as powerful as the most powerful antibiotics without the side effects. So that's oregano or oregano oil. Of course, I always tell people, too, against viruses, it's really, really important to make sure you have lysine. Lysine, of course, L-Y-S-I-N-E, lysine is an amino acid available over the counter in the milk food store. And it's virtually effective against any, vi any virus. Why? Simply because viruses require arginine to feed. They, they feed off of arginine. They strengthen themselves off an amino acid called arginine. So the antagonistic amino acid uh, to arginine is lysine. You know, so many folks have had fever blisters and things like that, and of course, uh, successfully used lysine over the years. So lysine is really important to use. You may need to use up to 3,000 a day, 3,000 milligrams a day, in the face of, a, of an onslaught or a full-blown attack against a really virulent virus. Preventive purposes, just one a day is fine. So again, I think a monolorin, manuka, oregano, and uh, lysine are really important. And uh, as well, nutricillin, I like to talk about, N-U-T-R-I-C-I-L-I-N, nutricillin. And these are mostly uh, dual purpose, again, antibacterial, antiviral. Nutricillin actually is a uh, remarkable lactoferrin colostrum immune enhancer. Works very, very well. The Ecological Formulas brand makes a really good nutricillin. I also like transfer point brand beta-glucan, B-E-T-A-G-L-U-C-A-N, beta-glucan. 
and we have antibacterial, antiviral support. Um, you know, lemon balm is probably the single most simple uh, antiviral, antibacterial that you can get. Lemon balm can be taken in tea form, as well as echinacea, which is pretty nice as an antiviral. But lemon balm is very, very powerful as an antiviral. And uh, I always like to, too, mention the colloidals. You know, colloidal silver and colloidal gold. I use, I recommend colloidal gold for antiviral and colloidal silver for antibacterial. So let's kind of cover some of these real quickly again. Oregano is one of the things we talked about. Manuka honey, monolaurin, nutracillin, beta-glucan, lemon balm and lysine, and of course the colloidal gold and colloidal silvers. These are very powerful agents that uh, will make sure that you stay well through all these horrible exposures. And again, they're out there. They're, they're, there's going to be more and more of this kind of uh, talk, unfortunately. So it's going to be extremely important for you to remain well protected in the face of a lot of these exposures. It's a crazy world. Like I started off saying at the beginning of the program tonight, this is all sci-fi, folks. I mean, there's some really crazy people out there doing some crazy things. And uh, if not crazy, careless. You know, there's some crazy and careless things going on out there. Uh, and you need to be protected. Now, one other thing I probably should mention as well, uh, actually, make, I'll make that too. I'm going to recommend also olive leaf extract capsules because, again, they're really good antiviral. I also made a note to, uh, to share with you the importance of grapefruit seed extract as an antibacterial. So olive leaf is an added antiviral. Grapefruit seed extract is a very potent antibacterial support system as well. So, you know, when you're thinking about the, uh, the bird flus, the swine flus, uh, the Lyme disease problems, the, uh, of course, you know, another engineered virus is the human T cell leukemia virus, which we haven't even had time to talk about. But there's a lot of engineering going on. Suffice it to say, you need immune protection. It's available. It's effective. It's been well, they've been well studied. So I just want to make sure you get those messages and make sure you're all healthy and well and well protected and uh, have the wisdom to support yourself immunologically. And uh, I think uh, in just a few short minutes here, we're actually going to take a short little break. We've got uh, actually a, an interview coming up with, uh, you know, it's kind of a nice change here from talking about some of these dire circumstances to talk about somebody who's very, very special, very positive, and a great passion of helping others to define their goals and create action plans in their lives. And uh, we've got somebody on the line, Sally Felton, life coach, author, transition specialist, motivational speaker, and uh, international talk radio host. Sally Felton, welcome to the Natural Health Show. Thank you very much. I am so glad to be here. It's great to have you on board. Tell us a little bit about where you're at these days. What's going on in your world? Well, I've just finished writing a book. If I'm so smart, why can't I get rid of this clutter? <laughs> I um, love that. Made it number one on Amazon. I'm thrilled about that. Um, had uh, Peter Walsh from Oprah endorse it, so all is good. That sounds great. And uh, you, you've got an upcoming uh, event, uh, the Healthy Living Expo in June, is that right? We sure do. The 7th Annual Expo, and it's on Sunday, June 3rd. That, again, is Sunday, June 3rd at the Radisson Plymouth Waterfront. They've got 60 exhibitors, 15-plus workshops. And it's going to be from 10 to 4 p.m. So I'm, I'm curious, how, what kind of uh, really important, succinct advice would you like to share with our audience about how they could successfully navigate through life transitions? You know, we're talking a lot these days about the, the great shifts. And it seems like so many folks are talking about the shifts, and some are, of course, correlated with the concepts of the Mayan calendar and whatnot. But 2012 was a major transitional year for so many folks, maybe more so than ever before. What, what information could you, what advice would you like to share with, to share with us? I think there are three key points. One is one step at a time, go slowly. Don't make any rash decisions. The second is be proactive and don't be reactive. That's when you can get yourself caught up. And the third is be gentle to yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Just take a deep breath and live in the present. Live in the present. 
it's how you deal with the life transitions that um, really says how if you're going to survive or not survive. So take your time. Don't be rash. That's good. That's all really, really good advice. How, you know, during periods of transition, of course, they're very stressful times, even though perhaps wonderful things uh, are about to happen for folks on the other side of the transitional shifts. Uh, but going through them, they can be very destabilizing, and, and people can lose their balance. And uh, we need some advice in that room as well. Balance, boy, if I heard that, find <laughs> work-life balance. You need to prioritize. What is it that you want out of your life? Not what other people want from you, but what do you want? You have to align your values with what you want to do. If you want to slow down, how are you going to do it? Make a plan. Even if, as one client said, I wish I could read a book. And I said, but you can't. How would you do it? Well, she got caught up in, if she didn't read the whole book in a week, then she was a failure. I don't think of it that way. If you were to read for five minutes a day, you're reading more than you did the day before. So, as I, as I said at the very beginning, one step at a time, do a little bit. So, Sally, for, for that's exceptional advice, but for those folks out there that are sitting at home saying, you know, I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat, I'm a procrastinator, I've had to change for years, I knew that I should have done it, but I just, I don't seem to feel the confidence, the power, the strength, the fearlessness required to take those quantum leaps, yet I'm desperate to do so, I almost wish somebody would push me. What would you say to those folks? Take a deep breath and write down, literally, Throw all of your ideas of what you want to do, and I don't care if it's rearrange the kitchen drawer. I don't care if it is to darn socks or wash a load of laundry. I don't care what it is. Write it all down. Choose two things that you are willing to spend some time and confront if you're feeling more timid than somebody else. The whole point is to have success. You've got to do it at your time, on your schedule. So try with something you know you can accomplish. And folks should not get frustrated if they're not moving as quickly as they feel not they can. So just, nope. just find your natural pace. Uh, follow your natural movements and uh, don't stress yourself out about it. Growth is something that will find its own natural rhythm anyway. And growth for, for individuals is a different um, language altogether from one to the other. How I may do something could be totally drastically opposite than, than how you do it. It doesn't matter. Right. So what, when you, you, know, you work with so many folks and you coach so many folks, uh, what, what is it that you're finding the, the most common stumbling blocks these days? So folks don't feel so alone out there listening. They may, they may have uh, a feeling that they're the only people in the world on some of the stumbling blocks. So what kind of stumbling blocks can you, can you share with us that are very common these days? Change. Change is very scary for people. I mean, even somebody changing their phone number, mm -hmm. as, um, as small as that might be, for some, it could be huge for another because now they have to memorize it. Then they have to change um, all of their business cards. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Another thing is fear. Fear can hold our feet in cement. And it doesn't matter what fear looks like for one person or another. Fear is a feeling. And fear is an acronym. False evidence appears real. We think what will happen, but yet it hasn't even happened because it's in the future. And we're only using our imagination to render what the future might be. So when you hear that inner voice of fear beckoning, take a deep breath and say, it's not real, it hasn't happened, 
This is my imagination. That's great advice. And, and you know, I, I'm sure that uh, not unlike myself, there's an awful lot of, of people that you encounter that say, well, you know, now I'm tur I've turned 50, or, or now I've turned 60. Hard to believe that it goes by so quickly, but, you know, when I was in my 20s, 30s, or 40s, sure, yeah, I can talk myself into transition, into major life changes, but, you know, I'm, ju I'm too old for that stuff. I'm just going to stay with where I am, and I'm not going to go through changes. What would you say to those folks? Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Do something that you've always wanted to do, doesn't matter what, but challenge yourself. Growth is always part of your self-development. Whether we're 50, 60, 70, you could do one thing that you've never done before. Facebook. Try Facebook. Try social media. I mean, for me, I am, as the kids call me, prehistoric when it comes to <laughs> using the computer. But you know what? I face the fear. I make a lot of mistakes. But I'm the first one to say, help. I have no idea what I'm doing. And use humor. Humor is contagious. That's absolutely true. It really, really is. You know, whenever I think about that, I always think about there was a, a, an album or a CD that I had years ago. It was a, a laugh for the health of it. I can't remember who it was. But there were a group of us that I always talk about that were listening and, and I thought, okay, that's funny. And one person started to laugh, and before you know it, there were two. And then in a matter of mere minutes, the entire room was completely out of control because we were laughing at laughter. We were laughing at each other laughing. Yeah. And it had a certain contagious nature to it. And no matter what kind of negative mood we were in prior to that, everybody was in unison feeling the, uh, the result of joy. It was great. It is. And when you go along the street and nobody seems to smile, look at them, make eye contact, and smile. Say thank you, say please. You'd be amazed how that really picks up someone's spirit. And changes the entire energy. It does. So, Sally, what will you be doing at the Expo, at the Healthy Living Expo, in Plymouth on the 3rd of June? I am so excited about this. I'm going to have my book there. If I'm so smart, why can't I get rid of this clutter? <laughs> That's great. And it's the triangular effect. It's the mental, the physical, and the emotional clutter we all have. Let's face it, we all have it. Mm. I'm going to be doing a workshop, um, and I make it very interactive, so you all will go back with a plan, at least with two things that you can work on. And we'd love to hear your website as well for folks who want to uh, stay in touch with you. What is your website? Sure. It's www.sally, S-A-L-L-I-E, Felton, F as in Frank, E-L-T-O-N, lifecoach.com. Easy to remember that is Sally Felton, a professional certified coach, certainly with a great deal of passion and, and radiant light. It's great to have you on board. And again, if folks are interested in, in working with you at the Healthy Living Expo, Plymouth, June 3rd, check it out. And Sally, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And best to everybody out there. Thanks again. We're going to take a short little break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Do your kids jump all over your furniture? Do they have everlasting energy? Come to Tumble Fun Gymnastics, where children of all ages develop and grow as athletes in a safe and structured environment, providing them the skills to succeed in an obstacle course of life. Tumble Fun Gymnastics is celebrating 28 years in business. We are a family business run by second and third generation gymnastic coaches with a tradition for excellence. We have classes for ages 20 months to 14 years. Grade school girls practice on all Olympic apparatus. Grade school boys get an extreme gymnastic workout. Sign up anytime for classes, open gym, kids night out, or awesome birthday parties. Gift certificates are available. We are in Marshfield Center. Call us at 781-837-9895. Or find us online at TumbleFunGymnastics.com. That's 781-837-9895 or TumbleFunGymnastics.com. Are you one of the 
20 million Americans suffering from neuropathy, shingles, or chronic nerve pain. In the last three years, many people have discovered excellent and affordable treatment for diabetic, post-chemotherapy, and other types of neuropathy and chronic pain. Dr. John Gaines, chiropractic physician since 1981 on Route 53 in Romo, has had such astounding results with his unique neuropathy program that he's now teaching his remarkable system to doctors around the country. His most recent book entitled Beating Neuropathy remains a bestseller. In fact, Dr. John Hayes is the world's exclusive educator and trainer for Rebuilder Medical Technologies. Call Dr. Hayes' office 24-7 to schedule a free neuropathy analysis. Call 781-659-7989. That's 781-659-7989. Call now while free neuropathy analysis slots are open. Are you ready to take the ultimate healing journey? Hi, this is Mark Cole. Let me introduce you to mind, body, spirit practitioner, Debbie Lynn Toomey, owner of Ultimate Healing Journey. She is committed to inspiring and providing services in harmony, health, and well-being. Debbie Lynn provides a path to self-empowerment, self-discovery, and healing by teaching you unique, easy-to-use, and effective mind, body, and spirit practices. Her multidimensional technique and guidance help those who have lost their internal compass, assisting them in finding and reclaiming their authentic, masterful self. Hi. I am Debbie Lynn Toomey. As you embark upon this ultimate journey of healing with me, you will begin to recognize the sacred place of true beauty, freedom, joy, and love within you. You will discover your magnificent and powerful self. So call Debbie Lynn Toomey of Ultimate Healing Journey today. I personally recommend her. Call me at 617-653-2561. Visit ultimatehealingjourney.com and like Ultimate Healing Journey on Facebook. The only journey is the one within. Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by I Free to Be and Dr. Mistando of the Marshfield Chiropractic. Heidi Ho, back with you again, and uh, that was a great, uh, great chat we had with Miss Sally. She, she had some uh, remarkably positive and some great powerful energy, so check her out June 3rd on Plymouth at the uh, Healthy Living Expo. No doubt that'll be well worth the trip. Uh, just to uh, conclude, too, I want to recommend, uh, if folks haven't done it, I'm sure most of you have, just to check out the natural news. I think uh, they do a great job with that, uh, with that piece, and uh, it's readily available. You just Google the natural news, and you'll find it. Uh, they did a report on June 6th of uh, 2011 last year, uh, and I just made some notes that uh, I think were really astounding. Forensic evidence emerged that a European E. coli superbug that was bioengineered to produce human fatalities was discovered in German hospitals. And uh, let's see, it was a member of the 0140, 0104 strain, an 0104 strain, almost never naturally resistant to antibiotics. In order to develop such antibiotic resistance, they must be repeatedly exposed to uh, complete drug immunity. Um, so. Um, to discover the, their origins, to find out where these incredibly uh, uh, super-duper engineered bacterial strains came from. They tracked them down. We have researchers from the uh, Robert Koch Institute in Germany uh, found that they were uh, genetically engineered. They found their code and found that the 0104 strain of E. coli was exposed to and thus resistant to penicillin, tetracycline, sulfa, cephalosporins, amoxicillin, pisobactin, all the different antibiotics you can think of. In addition, the O104 was found to possess the ability to produce what's called the SBL enzymes, or extended spectrum beta lactamase enzymes, which gives the bacteria their super bacterial powers, enables them to resist uh, virtually any of the hospital, the hospital grade antibiotics as well. Um, furthermore, they found that it possessed TEM1 and CTXM genes, uh, which basically cause uh, organ failure. So these are these are highly engineered bacteria and viruses that we're talking about. Um, these these particular this particular strain actually is reported on again June 6, 2011. Check it out on the Natural News. That's June 6, 2011. The Natural News. Natural News uh, reported on that. Um, but, uh, you know, my, my whole point here is, is that we need to be well armed, and your immune system needs every advantage that it can possibly be given. And it starts with you uh, eating properly, taking care of yourselves, not cutting corners all the time. You save the uh, corner cutting when you diet from weekends, uh, Monday through Friday, take care of business. But again, natural supplements to protect and defend yourself, monoline, nutracillin, beta-glucan, oregano, uh, grape
grapefruit seed extract, olive leaf extract, caps, lysine, lemon balm, manuka honey. Um, let's see, also andrographis, and another one I forgot to talk about earlier, andrographis. There's a product called Cold Care, spelled with a K, K O L B K E R E. It's an old Chinese herb, andrographis, that's been uh, effective for 3,000 years and killing really mild viruses and highly, uh, highly uh, potent, virulent viruses in particular. But again, I think that uh, the one thing you know you want to make sure you have on hand is the monomer at 600 milligrams. That's definitely um, that's a keeper. So um, these are all really important, I think, recommendations. And again, my my feelings are that natural medicine is going to become more and more powerful, and more and more important. It is already uh, it's, it's 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 assuming that particular status right under our noses these days. Uh, because again, we're finding out that nature produces its own natural selection without resistance. So there's always a natural enemy in nature that's not to be resisted because that's why nature set things up. And so when humans create their uh, their own way with things, that unfortunately th uh, there is a lack of resistance can be adapted around. Nature can't adapt around its, uh, the natural enemies that um, that are uh, that are out there. So again, with the uh, we talked about the manuka honey is producing a, a natural methyl oxal compound and even the most powerful MDM1 mutated b bacteria that was resistant to 15 different strains of antibiotics could not resist the methyl oxal agents in a 1 to 10 dilution in Manuka honey. Manuka honey. And one thing I will advise too when you're, when you're looking to get the Manuka honey, make sure it's it's a really higher grade and what we call medical grade Manuka honey, which you can buy in the health food stores at a 16 plus or a 20 plus. Uh, you want to make sure you get it in the 16 plus or the 20 plus uh, because those are the higher grades that are capable of uh, helping to uh, beat up on these bacteria that we're talking about. So, you know, again, uh, as we started off seeing the beginning of the program, these are very eerie times. Uh, the good news is that uh, there are solutions, and that's really key. So we wanted to go over this show with you as, as far as how to beat superbugs naturally. And I mean, you've got the score. You know the story, and uh, check out also if you get a minute the uh, molecular biologist there, the, the Becky McLean story. Uh, there's a number of different uh, sites that actually have that, but uh, check out that story of Becky McLean, uh, the Pfizer worker, the molecular biologist that I talked about in this interesting story. All right, well, we're up against the uh, the nine o'clock hour, and the time flies by. Of course, here each and every Sunday, my name is Mark Cole. And uh, we'd like to say thank you to uh, Larry Nelson for doing a great job being on the board. Thank you to uh, Ed Perry for making this uh, show possible, of course. And uh, until next Sunday, this is Mark and Cole reminding you all, please, be wise, be aware, be well, make it a healthy week. Good night.